New at six, it's been nearly a month since the vote to close down the Hampton Roads Regional Jail. Right now, several cities are working on new plans. So what's next for inmates and staff, and what does it mean to taxpayers? Eugene Daniel looks into the ripple effects of the decision. By April 1st, 2024, the Hampton Roads Regional Jail will shut down. After more than two decades, the closure means changes for five local cities. It was a long process, so this wasn't a uh, decision that was made lightly or quickly. In 1998, leaders of Hampton, Newport News, Norfolk, and Portsmouth agreed to open the regional jail to end overcrowding at their own facilities. Chesapeake signed on years later, but Bob Geist, the board chairman of the regional jail, says rising cost and an inability to hire staff left them no other choice just became apparent that the, the, the model was failing and that we weren't going to able to continue to, to operate. It was, is no longer, a model was no longer functioning. In 2019, the inmate population at the Hampton Roads Regional Jail hit 900 and the facility employed more than 300 people. Now they're down to less than 300 inmates with a staff of 155. Guy says short staff kept them from jailing more people for safety reasons. The board agreed to improve services after the Justice Department found jail conditions unconstitutional in 2018 following multiple inmate deaths. Geis says that did not factor in the decision to close. We were working on medical health, me mental health and medical, we were, they, they, but all of them required additional staffing. So what does the closure mean for local cities? Hampton City Jail is currently undergoing renovations. The city's vice mayor says they are now in talks to use the Western Tidewater Regional Jail in Suffolk. Overall, we're going to save money. I mean, there's no doubt we're going to save millions of dollars a year. Geis is also a deputy city manager in Chesapeake, and he says it costs them twice as much to use Hampton Roads Regional than their own jail. The contract required them to pay for 250 beds each year, whether they use them or not. Now they plan to hire more deputies and upgrade the local jail's mental health facilities. Now ultimately, you know, we all have to be um, good stewards of our taxpayers' money. In some cases, like for the city of Portsmouth, the closure opens up new possibilities. City leaders are on record saying they are interested in buying the facility. It's a deal Sheriff Michael Moore would gladly take. But my fight has always been for to do what's best for the city of Portsmouth. Moore has long argued the city should pull out of the regional jail agreement and invest in local facilities. Right now, Portsmouth pays more than $4 million to hold dozens of spots at the regional jail. But since he's been in the office, Moore says they've sent only a handful of inmates at a time, while the Portsmouth City Jail averages more than 100 empty beds. To me, that was valuable, valuable taxpayers' money that was being spent that was unnecessary because we didn't need that facility to house our inmates. We didn't have an overcrowding problem. Moore allowed us inside the Portsmouth City Jail to see why he thinks the 54-year-old building needs to be replaced. The sheriff prefers the city to build a new facility, but he'd support moving it to the newer regional jail. I'm just glad to see some light and some movement because, you know, time is not on our side with the age of the current facility that, that functions as the Portsmouth City Jail. Back at the Hampton Roads Regional Jail, Guy says no deal is in place. Right now, the goal is to move inmates to other facilities and help jail employees find new jobs. In Portsmouth, Eugene Daniel, 13 News Now. And we reached out to each of the five cities about their plans. For their responses, search this story on 13newsnow.com.